The text for today is very brief. It's from Job chapter 19 that Sherry just read for us a moment ago and verse 25, where Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And the subject, as you see, is from a song that I will tell you the story of at the end. It simply says, because he lives. Let us pray. Lord, unless you open our ears and touch our hearts, we merely go through the ritual of worship and nothing happens. And on this Easter Sunday, we would not want that to be your experience. So come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all your life-giving power. Breathe upon these hearts of ours and fill us with your power to hear and believe and to be faithful servants of the gospel of Easter. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be well-pleasing in thy sight. Now we pray thee in the name of Christ, who is our strength and our salvation. And we all say, Amen. Because he lives. It is not news that for many people in our world today, dark Calvary is all they ever have known. For them, there is no breakthrough hope for Easter. Suffering, sadness, and sorrow are so pervasive all around them. Wrong seems forever on the throne, giving orders. Sin, selfishness, and satanic evil just keep on flexing mighty muscles in a fierce determination to rob life of any hope for peace, perfect peace, in this dark world of ours. Death and destruction and discouraging developments seem also inescapable, not just in Gaza and Ukraine, but right next door to us here in Haiti and up the road in Baltimore where you saw that bridge collapse with such tragic consequences a few days ago. And it's not new, is it? You ask Job of old, for example, and in one typical chapter of the book that bears his name, you hear him howling with dreadful discontent and disgust at his disastrous dilemma when he says, first of all, my family and my friends and my foes despise me, and they say, I'm getting exactly what I deserve, so why don't you just confess, fess up, and keep quiet. And secondly, he said, my fortune and my future are totally destroyed. And everywhere I turn, God has walled up my way so that I cannot pass. I'm running into brick walls everywhere. God has set darkness on my path. I cannot even see that I am walking into brick walls. Have you heard anybody talk like that lately? And then he continues, Job does, he says, for some strange reason, I'm just born to trouble. Like the sparks fly up from a fireplace, I am born to trouble. Read chapter 5 and verse 7 and you'll hear him howling with disgust and anger. But, no matter what, the difficulties and the disasters beyond description could not destroy Job's foundation of faith in Almighty God. 
Even when he's crying out, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrows. How is it that he can have that kind of a position and have that kind of a faith in spite of his difficulties? You ask him. And let him answer for himself, and this is what he, I believe he would say. Life has turned on me to mow me down and undermine my faith in Almighty God. But because I know that my Redeemer liveth. Notice he didn't say, because I hope or I think, or I am just uh, praying, he says, I know for sure that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he will stand upon the earth strong. And even if my skin and my flesh are destroyed, then I know I will see God on my side as my defense attorney to make my case before the throne of grace as my advocate. So way back then, Job is anticipating the Easter message, isn't he? And the question for us this morning as we gather here in Laley, are we like Job affirming the message of Easter every day? Oh, I know that as we grow older, we quickly acknowledge, don't we, that in this veil of tears, one, loneliness and loss of one kind or another are very real, aren't they? Painful and heartbreaking development will always continue. We know that as long as this whole earth is groaning in labor pains to produce the transformed children of God as Paul says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 21, and until the new Jerusalem dawns and comes from heaven above. We know that. And we know that human beings long before ISIS and Hamas are vile and can be so unpredictable. Even before Peter denied Jesus and Judas betrayed him. And even before the temple leaders in Jerusalem collaborated with the principalities and powers in, in Rome and right there in Jerusalem. And you and I, like Mary, we come to the tomb of life and with unbelievable gloom we cry out in despair, they have taken my Lord away. For it is downright incredible, isn't it, what people will do for unimaginable reasons. Do you know what I'm talking about? Imagine, says Mary, as we listen to John's account, not only have they crucified him as an outlaw and a criminal and rejected him as a fake and a fraud claiming to be a messiah, but horror of horrors, they have now taken his body to desecrate it and to dump it who knows where. And right then and there in that garden, with all her lamentation and downcast spirit, Jesus comes and interrupts her dismal dirge. And John says, he called her by name and says, Mary. And she was rescued from the brink of a nervous breakdown. And she shouts in reply and with joy and gratitude, Rabuni, my dear beloved teacher. And she grabs on to him and she didn't want to let go. Friends, let me end by saying to us this morning what we are seeing and rehearsing and reading from John is, first of all, that bewildered love came expecting this, a sealed tomb, but found it filled with angels and leftover napkins that were on Jesus' face. 
She came expecting to see a broken corpse that she wanted to anoint and, and, uh, before the burial. And she found instead the risen Lord. She went holding on to the familiar past only to discover the unfolding future right there in the graveyard. And so, Mary, why are you weeping and why are you wailing? Don't you know that Pharaoh's arm has been drowned? Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn, because he lives. It's Easter, honey, so don't weep and mourn anymore. Easter is on the rise. How can you be sad and sorrowing for one who's gone to be with the Lord of heaven and earth? Remember how he said at Lazarus' grave to the weeping sisters, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe that? If you do, you will never die. You will never be despairing. You will never be hopeless. But often, we like poor Mary, keep looking only at the tomb, at the grave. And we turn our backs on him who is the Lord of heaven and earth and is our, our coming king. And when Mary got the message of Easter, she ran and told everyone, I have seen the Lord. And because he lives, all fear is gone. Is that your testimony this morning? Oh yes, Jesus was executed by Rome as an imposter and as a threat to the state, but he was vindicated by God as the ruler of the earth, and he shall reign forever and ever. We need to say amen to that, don't we? Amen. So instead of weeping, let us know and cry out that Jesus Christ is Lord, and the pretend lords of this world are fakes and frauds, and we don't need to put any confidence in them. Oh, the domination systems of this world, they do not have the final word about life, do they? So I say to us in closing this morning, Friends, we need to affirm and believe with all our hearts, don't we, that Good Friday seems long and dark and hard, but Easter is on the way, and because he lives, we too can live victorious lives, right here in Lely, right here in this church, as we look to the future with hope and confidence that the God who has brought us thus far will lead us safely through. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? One last story. I told you that Bill and Gloria Gaither, who wrote the hymn Because He Lives, said that they wrote it because in the late 60s everything was falling apart. There was the Vietnam War. There was the God is Dead movement. There was the civil rights movement on the march. And there was turbulence in Vietnam and everything seemed to be falling apart. And they had had two children, two daughters already. And they said, when they realized that Gloria was pregnant, oh, this is a bad time to have a child. And right then, shortly after they were despairing and hadn't written any songs for quite a while, Gloria got pregnant. And they were told that little Benji was on the way. And that is what inspired them to write this new song that says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds tomorrow and life is worth the living just because he lives. Is that your faith this morning? Let us pray.